An hilarious Edna and Jack Jack scene and a return to Syndrome's Island are just some of the scenes and stories that ended up cut from Incredibles 2. Yippee Kaye, movie lovers, it's Jan here, and today I'm revealing all the deleted scenes and stories you never got to see in the Incredibles sequel. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to get all my Pixar videos, and also leave a comment about the movie for a chance to win a cool Incredibles 2 Funko Pop. Spoilers ahead, so take care if you've not seen the film yet, or add this video to your Watch Later playlist. A fantastic fashion show scene featuring fan favourites Edna Mode and Jack Jack was originally going to appear in the Incredibles sequel. In the deleted scene, Edna hosted a fashion show of her designs, and Jack Jack hilariously and repeatedly interrupted. The clothes in Edna's fashion line, called Mode, were worn by models, but still drew inspiration from the powers of Edna's favourite client, superheroes. For example, the see-through chiffon around this model's head was inspired by the look of a force field. Of course, we know only too well about Edna's disdain for supermodels from the first movie. Supermodels. Ha! Nothing super about them, spoiled, stupid little stick figures with poofy lips who think only about themselves. Ha! I used to design for gods. So the fashion show was really a way of showing that Edna was having to work with models because supers who she really wanted to work with were still illegal. Incredibles 2 is Pixar's longest film to date, and I think this scene was cut because the film was pretty packed already. Although we do get some fantastic moments with Edna and Jack-Jack in the final film, I'm sure many fans would have liked to see them together even more. An earlier version of the story that was eventually discarded featured Helen donning a disguise of a black wig and glasses and taking on the fake name Gina Stryker, so she could go undercover and return to No Manison Island. There was a mystery on the island that she needed to figure out, and this could have been an interesting alternate story, especially if it had uncovered some as yet unknown secrets about either Syndrome or Mirage, who were both based on the island in the first movie. The scene where Elastigirl uses her powers to stop a runaway monorail while simultaneously dealing with masses of traffic and a family phone call was initially going to be a lot less action-packed. Yes, an early version of that sequence had Elastigirl bring the train to a halt by simply pulling a lever after she'd broken into the control room. I'm really glad they explored other options for that scene as if they'd gone with that initial idea, it would have been a lot less adrenaline fueled and we wouldn't have seen as much of that awesome Elasticycle chase sequence, which was a very cool moment of Elastigirl girl displaying her solo superpowers. The opening sequence with the Underminer went through many changes during the movie's development. At one time it was going to feature enormous clay golems bursting out of the ground, then that idea was thrown out and they tried robots instead, and even massive earthworms. All those scenarios ended up being scrapped in favour of the runaway tunneler, because the idea was that the sequence should work like a cold open. It was meant to quickly grab our attention and get us on board for the rest of the movie, and all the additional golems, worms or robots could have dragged the scene out too much. Another aspect of Incredibles 2 that was altered numerous times was its villain because it just wasn't working. That caused some pretty big headaches for the filmmakers, especially when the movie's release date was moved from 2019 up to 2018, which meant they had much less time to try out different scenarios to discover which one worked best. Incredibles 2 writer-director Brad Bird also had villain issues on the first movie, which had a different big bad before Syndrome. However, Incredibles 2 was an even tougher nut to crack, and Bird reckons he discarded two and a half movies worth of scenes along the way to creating the final villain plot with Screen Slaver. Initially, actor Bob Odenkirk's character Winston Dever was going to be a shadier, more untrustworthy figure. Along the lines of Odenkirk's most famous role as criminal lawyer Saul Goodman in Breaking Bad and its prequel Better Call Saul. However, Winston changed significantly during Brad Bird's rewrites and recording sessions with Odenkirk, becoming a more innocent, positive and upbeat guy. Although Incredibles 2 picks up right where the first film left off, at one point Brad Bird did briefly consider aging up the pars and showing them at completely different stages in their lives, in line with the 14 years that have passed since the original movie. But ultimately Bird was more keen on following the example set by The Simpsons, which he used to work on, as he wanted to further explore the special insight and perspectives that each character had on their particular period of life, and he also just wasn't interested in a college-aged Jack-Jack. And I'm so glad he made that decision as seeing an incredibly super-powered baby was one of my favourite parts of the movie. Brad Bird came up with the core idea for Incredibles 2, in other words its mum and dad role reversal and its focus on Jack-Jack's powers, around the time he finished the original movie. However, numerous other ideas for the remaining storyline were initially considered. 
The first plot that was pitched and which was greenlit by Pixar involved artificial intelligence. The crew started working on this but Bird had to abandon it when he realised it just didn't work. In fact, Bird has said his scrapped AI idea could make its way into another movie so he hasn't yet given any further details on it. Of course, AI was already featured in the first movie via the Omnidroid. Bird then tried another story which featured the Pars enjoying the showbiz spotlight. Speaking to Cinema Blend, the filmmakers explained that the stakes in this story just weren't high enough to create good drama, and that it made the family seem shallow. Eventually, at an internal Pixar screening, it was Finding Nemo director Andrew Stanton who suggested that, given Helen's reluctance to rejoin the world of supers in the first film, the sequel needed to provide a really strong reason for her to do that, and that led to the idea that Elastigirl should be the poster person for legalising supers, which, combined with the introduction of a brand new villain, The Screenslaver, would properly up the stakes for the new movie. By the way, the gorgeous Art of Incredibles 2 hardback book also has some cool concept art of outtakes from the movie, including a story where the Parr family travelled to an icy frozen land. And there's an intriguing shot of Bob frozen under a thick layer of ice, so I'm thinking this story might have involved Helen and the family travelling there to rescue him, though that might have felt a bit too similar to the first movie. There are also some very interesting characters that were deleted from Incredibles 2, including Frozone's wife Honey, and I'll reveal all the details in my next video. I'll link to it here and in the video description as soon as it's ready. Now, are there any of these deleted scenes or stories that you would have liked to have seen in the movie, and what was your favourite moment in the finished film? Be sure to comment and subscribe for a chance to win an awesome Incredibles Funko Pop. Tap left to check out the top 30 Easter eggs you might have missed in Incredibles 2, or tap right for my full Pixar playlist where I explain all of Jack-Jack's 17 powers, and tap the bell to get all my new videos as soon as I upload them. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Yippee-ki-yay, movie lovers!